Hello everybody, it's Nell with Little Yellow House Crafts. I am back finally with my long-awaited and promised stocking tutorial. This is my tutorial on how I finish off my cross-stitch stockings with the quilted backing and how I sew it all together. Um, thank you all for being patient while I finished the stitching and got um, and found the time <laughs> with two little ones to sit down and film this and finish that stocking. Um, it was fun for me to do and I enjoyed making the tutorial. Uh, it was my first attempt so it might be a little rough and along those lines I just want to apologize that it's not more comprehensive. I film my videos on my phone and I don't have a tripod or any sort of setup where I can position the camera over my shoulder to kind of watch what I'm doing. So um, the way I've organized it is that I will uh, in each video clip I will tell you what the next step is and I will sort of try to demonstrate for you what I'm about to do then I'll end the clip and off camera I'll go and and do that next step and then I'll come back and I'll show you what I've done so hopefully it's enough that it will give you a clear idea of the steps I take and how how it all comes together um, I also just want to say that this tutorial assumes a basic understanding of sewing on a sewing machine you don't need to be a seamstress at all. You really just need to be able to do some straight stitches. Um, that's There's no fancy stitches in it, there's no fancy techniques, just you know your basic straight stitch and a little bit of back stitch on your sewing machine. If you can do that, then you can do this stocking. I promise it's not as hard or as uh, complicated as it looks. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, if you have questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you need clarification on any of the steps, I'd be happy to try and clarify it for you more. But I hope that you find success. I hope some of you try it and I hope it's successful for you and um, yeah, so good luck. Um, enjoy the tutorial and I will see you very soon with my next update video, probably the end of this month. So I'll see you guys later. All right, let's get into it. Let's talk about the supplies you're gonna need. Obviously, first and foremost, you need your finished piece. Um, if you choose to wash your uh, your finished piece that needs to be done first and then it needs to be ironed really well get all of the wrinkles out of it so that we can sew it accurately um, Obviously, you will also need your backing fabric. This is what I've chosen a, a light green calico with a, um, a Holly print on it. And so that's the backing fabric. I've chosen um, I am choosing to do mine with a bias tape um, hem on the inside of the the front of the stocking and you'll see what I mean later on but so this is the bias tape I'm choosing to use black for this project I've used blue I've used green I've used red um, for this one I'm choosing to use black um, you'll also need uh, two colors of thread they may be the same but they're probably different let me explain the first one is to match your backing fabric this is the thread we're going to use to quilt the back of our stocking as well as to sew the whole stocking together so that's your main thread color this one is only used at one point in the stocking and that is when you are sewing the bias tape finished edge uh, down and that um, you're gonna need a color that matches the front top of your stocking along here um, because it, I do actually sew through the fabric here in the front, the stitched portion, and you'll see what I mean later. So I have a blue that matches um, my stitching for that one part of the project. Everything else can be sewn in the green. That's for that one spot. I don't want to have green um, up there with the blue. So that's what you need. I have my bobbins <laughs> and my toe separators. Have you guys seen this? Don't worry, I never use these on my toes. Uh, someone showed me this once and it's brilliant. If you find you lose your bobbins and your thread goes flying, get a couple of uh, cheap toe separators. They work great. Um, you'll need pins. I mentioned the thread and the bias tape. You'll need a ruler and um, a pencil. And this is for marking the lines on my fabric where I'm going to be quilting. Now if you are using a dark fabric, you'll probably need a white marking pencil. Um, for this color fabric, it's it's light enough that I can just use a regular pencil, and I don't worry so much about it going away because the part that's marked is going to be on the inside of my stocking. So I don't worry too much about that. If that's going to bother you, though, get a you know a um, one of those marking pencils that goes away you know after a couple of hours. 
I have my fabric scissors. I have some spray adhesive. I use this when I'm putting together the back side of my stocking um, to put the um, to kind of stick the the fabric and the batting or wadding together to make it easier to quilt. So that's why I have this. It's just a, a light duty general performance um, spray adhesive. And then the last two things you'll need your batting or your wadding. I'm using just a thin. It's not very thick. You'll see it in, in more detail when I pull it out. And then you'll need your interfacing or your fusible webbing. This is um, Pellon. Uh, it's a very common brand here in the States. You can find it anywhere. Um, I am using fusible midweight. Um, so I like my uh, the interfacing for my stockings to have a little bit more substance because it needs to, to hold up with a quilted backing that's quite a bit thicker than the stitched piece. So I like to use something a little bit heavier, but you can feel free to use whatever you want and it is fusible. It's got the little bumps on the side. So that's the supplies that you need um, to put together this stocking and I'm going to go ahead and go and fuse on my um, iron-on interfacing on the back side. Follow the directions that come with this. Make sure that you put the bumpy side, <laughs> speaking from experience, oops, make sure that you put the bumpy side down on the back of your fabric so that you don't fuse your interfacing to your iron. But I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll see you guys when I get done with that. Okay, bye! Okay, now I've got uh, the interfacing has been fused to the back of my piece. Um, you can see we've got some extra fabric here hanging off um, both the Ada and the interfacing. And so I'm going to go ahead and trim this down to about three quarters of an inch to an inch all the way around the stocking. Um, and that's going to provide the pattern for cutting out our backing fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that out and then I'll show you what I mean and I'll be back in a minute. All right, so here's my stocking cut out. I have trimmed off all the extra Ada and uh, interfacing from around the edges and I've gone ahead and laid it on top of my backing fabric. Now um, I have doubled over this backing fabric so if you can see here I have two layers and they're the wrong sides are facing together and this is important because the back side of our stocking is actually two layers with some batting sandwiched in between and so you have your inside layer and you have your outside layer the part that's going to be seen on the back of the stocking um, so I've gone ahead and laid my stocking on top of this I'm going to go ahead and pin it down all the way around so that it doesn't move and then I'm going to um, just go ahead and cut the stocking shape right up against this edge that I've trimmed all the way around the whole thing um, in preparation for um, using the spray adhesive and the batting. So I will go ahead and pin and trim this out and see you again in a moment. Hi everyone. So I just thought I'd show you really quickly what it looks like um, all pinned down. You see I have it pinned together so that the fabric doesn't move. And now, sorry for the shaking, <laughs> now I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut around this edge all the way around the whole stocking. See you in a minute. All right, here is the stocking with the backing fabric cut out. There's two layers of backing fabric in here. Let's see if I can show you. So we have our, our top layer, which is our stocking with the interfacing, and then we have two layers of backing fabric. Oh, there you go. Uh, with wrong sides together, so we have a front and a back piece. I've now laid this entire bundle on top of my um, batting or my wadding for my friends across the pond. Um, and I'm going to, once again, using this as my template, go ahead and cut a piece that exactly matches all the way around. Um, you can repin if you if you feel the need to, but I find with the with the batting, I don't need to repin because it kind of it kind of sticks. Well, you can't tell there. It kind of sticks to the fabric anyway. It doesn't really require a lot of pinning. Um, and the batting does not need to be exact. It needs to be as exact as it can be, but it's not quite as important. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut um, my piece of batting out and then I will show you what I'm gonna do next. Okay, 
I've cut out my batting and I've unpinned the whole bundle and separated the pieces. So the next step, we're going to set the actual stocking aside. The next step is I'm going to take um, my backing fabric pieces as well as my batting um, out into my garage. I would take it outside, but it's very cold. <laughs> I'm going to take it out in the garage and I'm going to use my spray adhesive. I'm going to spray a light layer on the back side of this piece. Then I'll lay my batting on top, of course, matching all the edges as best I can. Then I'll spray another layer onto the batting and I'll lay my other piece on top. So we're creating a, um, a little sandwich with um, the batting in between and just make sure that you do it right because once the, once you glue it down it can be hard to separate it so make sure you're you're getting it so the wrong sides are facing in so on the outside of both we have a nice pretty side of our fabric so I'm going to go ahead and take that out into the garage and spray adhesive all that together and that will get us ready for um, the marking of the lines and the quilting part so I will see you guys in a moment all right, so here it is all glued together. We've got our nice little sandwich with the batting in the middle to make it nice and puffy. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, um, my pencil and my ruler. Get all this stuff off of it. Ooh, okay. I'm going to take my pencil and my ruler and I'm going to go ahead and mark some lines. Sorry, I'm going to sit down here for a moment so I can show you what I mean. Now on this particular fabric, it already has some pretty pronounced diagonal lines. Um, that's not true of all fabrics. Um, but essentially what you're going to do is you're going to take your ruler and you're going to mark some stitching lines. And I'm probably going to follow this kind of an angle um, to keep with the line of the, the print on the fabric. And I'm just going to mark some uh, lines about two to three inches apart going this direction and then I'm going to flip and go the other direction and I'm going to do that across the whole thing. Um, and this is going to provide the guidelines when we take it over to our sewing machine to sew the quilting. Um, I will go ahead and draw the lines I'm talking about and then I'll show it to you so you can see what I mean. And then we'll take it over to the machine and we'll stitch those lines. Okay, here are my lines marked. Now they're very faint, so I hope you can see We've got diagonal lines going this way, and we've got diagonal lines going this way. And I've done them about two inches apart all the way around. Um, I did forget to mention, and I want to make sure I point this out, that what you, the side you want to mark on is the side that's going to end up on the inside of your stocking. So if here's my outer, my, my cross-stitched portion, you can see that this part that I've marked on will actually end up inside the stocking. This will be the outside. Um, so just make sure that you do that so that you don't end up with lots of mark marking lines on the outside of your stocking where everyone can see it. But now, um, now that these are marked, I'm going to go ahead and load my sewing machine up with my green thread right there. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and just using a very basic straight stitch, I'm just going to stitch along all of these edges, or excuse me, not edges, along all of these marked lines, um, both directions, and we'll end up with a beautiful quilted back for our stocking. Um, for this, you don't need to bother with um, back stitching at the edges because all of this is going to be sewn um, in about an inch uh, when we fix it to the to the actual front of our stocking. So really easy, very quickly, just sew up all of these lines. Um, and I will be back once that's done. Okay, so the quilting on the back of the stocking is done. Uh, you can see down here I decided to leave off the very bottom um, quilt line down here because by the time we sew the stocking together that line would have been mostly cut off anyway. So here's the the stocking, the front and back, it's all nicely quilted and puffy. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to finish the top edge of both of our, our pieces, our front and our back, which this is all now the back. Um, we're going to set the back aside. We're going to focus on the front first. You can see I've taken my stocking and I've folded down the extra Ada that we left. 
um, down to the edge of the stitching and I've pressed that really well with the iron. What I'm going to do now is take my piece of bias tape that I've cut. This is one inch single fold bias tape. You can see there and I've folded it in half and I've ironed it in half and what we're going to do is we're going to slip that fold I'm trying to do this one handed slip that fold over the edge the the raw edge there of the Ada and stitch it right along here by the the bottom of that bias tape right there and all this is going to do is give us a nice clean finished edge to the Ada without adding a lot of bulk without having to like fold it under itself a couple of times so I'm going to go ahead and and stick that um, bias tape on there and stitch along there and for that I'm going to probably use my uh, my blue thread um, and then I will come back and show you how we finish the the top edge of the back side okay so here you can see I have sewn my bias tape to the raw edge of my Ada that has been folded down now in order to keep this from flapping and catching I'm going to take it and I'm going to stitch in the ditch right along here I would normally probably stitch all the way down here to to um, really fix it down but because I have writing so high up on this stocking I'm instead going to stitch up a little higher let me show you where it will end up on the front so it'll probably end up right in this line right here right above the writing I'm gonna go ahead and stitch with my my blue thread to fix that that little flap down so it doesn't flap and catch um, once the stocking is all sewn together so I will go ahead and do that and then the top edge of the front will be done and we'll do the top edge of the back okay so I have sewn this down you can see right there um, and you can't see it on the front it blends right in you can see the edges there so that's kind of holding that flap down now we're gonna finish the back and I've kind of already started it so I can show you what I mean um, on the side that's going to be inside the stocking okay the wrong side we're calling this of the back I have folded the top down once and then folded it down again and pinned it and I've pinned it so that it matches up when the stocking pieces are put together it matches up with this top edge um, and that is going to make the top edge of the back and so I'm going to put my green thread back in my sewing machine sorry get this to focus I'm gonna put this green thread back in my sewing machine and stitch right here along the fold um, just right above it to fix that down um, and then the top edges of our stockings will be done um, so I'll see you in a minute okay so that is done you can see there it's stitched down it's not going anywhere um, the top edges of both our front and our back are finished the very last thing we have to do before sewing the whole stocking together and being being uh, totally done with it is we have to add the hanger um, now let me grab sorry don't get dizzy <laughs> um, let me show you my stocking as an example so here I have my stocking and you can see I made a fabric hanger that matches the back um, and so uh, in order to do that for this one let me just show you this is very very simple all I did was I cut a piece of my backing fabric about eight inches by about three inches folded it in half right sides together I'm gonna stitch at about oh between a half and three quarters of an inch um, and then trim off all the extra fabric here to the right trim it down nice and small flip the whole thing right side out and press it flat and that's going to make our um, our stocking hanger after I have that um, sewn and pressed I will go ahead and attach it to this inside corner right here and stitch it with the blue so that it blends in and uh, once that's on and fixed then we're going to be ready to stitch the whole piece back together and I will sh I will come back before I do that to show you how I pin it all together um, but I'm going to go ahead and make my my stocking hanger and get that sewn to the front okay now I have sewn the hanger for the stocking on let me show you what it looks like on the back you can see I'll come up close you can see I've just stitched with blue thread sorry it's not focusing 
Come on, there we go. Um, I've stitched with blue thread up here and then again down here to make it nice and sturdy. And I've used that blue thread so that it blends in with the stitching and you can't see it at all on the front. So now that that is on, we are ready to sew our whole stocking together. This is the last step um, besides trimming and flipping. So what we're going to do is we're going to place the right sides together. If we consider, um, if we consider the the portion that's been stitched as the right side and then the outside of the back as the right side. We're going to place those together like this and line them up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pin around the whole thing and then with this side facing me and using, you can see through the interfacing, using that line as my guide, I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to back stitch a little bit up here to lock it in. And I'm going to sew in one go around the entire thing. Obviously, I'll have it lined up better. Around the entire stocking, right up against the stitching, exactly on that line. I'm not going to leave any border. And I'm going to sew all the way up here, lock it in on this side uh, with some back stitch, and then cut my threads. And once that's done, I'm going to trim this edge down of all the layers of fabric. All of this is going to get trimmed down to about a quarter of an inch. No more than that. Once that's all trimmed all the way around, then we flip the stocking inside out and we're ready to iron it and it's done. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this together and I might give you one more, one last look before um, I sew it once it's pinned and then I'll show you what it looks like once it's sewn and trimmed. Here it is, all pinned and ready to be stitched. You can see here, I, it didn't quite line up, um, just the way that the, the top came together. Um, it didn't quite line up on all sides, but luckily we had a big enough gap here that it didn't matter, that it's a little, sh little short on this side and then long on this side. It didn't end up being a problem, so that's why we leave that nice one inch border all the way around. Um, but now that it's pinned, obviously we're not going to sew across the top, but now that it's pinned, I'm going to go ahead and take this over to my machine and I'm going to sew down the entire stocking and then back up. Um, and then I will, once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and trim it down to a quarter of an inch and I will be right back. This is where it starts to get exciting. All right, so I have stitched around the entire stocking right up against the stitching, as you can see. Um, and I've trimmed that down pretty close to about a quarter of an inch um, with all of the interfacing and all the different layers. I'm not concerned about it pulling through the seam. So I trim it pretty close because it makes it easier to flip the, the stocking inside out. So now comes the moment of truth. I'm going to go ahead and flip the stocking inside out and take it over to my ironing board and press it. And I will be back to show you the finished product. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. The stocking is finished. You can see we flipped it right side out and I've gone ahead and pressed it so that it lays nice and flat. Let me show you um, what it looks like on the back. So you can see we've got our, our nice quilted backing to give it a little extra dimension and squish. Um, let's look in the inside here. We have a nice finished edge on the front and on the back so nothing will catch and there you go um, so that can go get hung up next to the rest of mine I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial I hope that this was helpful I'm sorry that we kind of had to do it um, where all of the actual work was done off camera and it was just me kind of showing you the steps um, but I hope that this was helpful and I hope some of you are able to take this tutorial and um, do some of your own and I'd love to see them. If you do follow this tutorial and do your own stockings this way, I'd love for you to post a picture or a link for me to see them. Um, it was fun for me to do this tutorial. Like I said, this is the fourth one I've done this way and um, you know, it, it's pretty easy to me now, but I remember how intimidating that first one was. So I hope that this tutorial helped some of you. I hope that it inspired you to finish some of your beautiful Christmas stockings that you've been waiting, waiting to finish for a while. And um, I will see you guys very soon with my whip update and my plans for 2016. All right, take care guys. Bye.